Hi everyone, um, whoever still watches these videos, I know I got sassy for a moment because, um, people, uh, and, uh, just, uh, yeah, I don't know, I will, I don't know, there's been, like, debate on what I, what I, like, what I dress in and, like, how I dress that affects, you know, attracts users, so, I don't know, you're probably gonna hear me talk about that because even though I turned on the feature that like filters like inappropriate comments like that is still an issue <clears throat> and just the fact that like people are saying why are you dressed in a way that attracts abusers it's just that's a that's just a very big complex thing to say and it's just so I just um uh I'm probably gonna talk about it like if I keep doing these videos, like just, I am a feminist, um, I am an intersectional feminist, um, and I think a lot of people have the wrong idea about what fem feminism is, there's a lot of people that do feminism really unhealthily, there's a lot of people that say that they're a feminist and do feminist things that are actually not upholding the movement's ideals and the whole point that we're trying to get to, so anyways, do you see me getting fired up? Um, so that's probably going to be a thing, and if you don't like that, then, um, then odds are the videos are for you, um, but, uh, you know, you do what you wish with those, um, I'm just going to keep being me, um, I wear those clothings because they're what I feel comfortable in, um, I just completely, completely forgot that, like, the whole entire, like, rest of the world is, like, because, like, I've been on Instagram for so long, and that's such a positive community, that's such a, like, let's just be who we are, let's be how we're gonna be comfortable, um, and so, and I love that, <clears throat> um, and so, uh, so this is just, but, um, yes, rant over, rant over, rant over, I think that kind of, I think I do this in the beginning of these videos, I kind of build myself up, because otherwise I don't really know, how I'm gonna be, um, I started out being really sad, um, when I turned this camera on, but, uh, I think that just kind of did what I needed it to do, so I am sad, though, and I want to talk about that, um, yeah, I'm sad because I just brought my ukulele out, my precious baby, precious, precious baby, very, very loved, um, I haven't played her for so long, and that's what I want to talk about, I played, I played her today, I played her just for posting this video, or filming this video, <clears throat> and it was hard, it was so hard, because, I think I mentioned in videos before. Um, also, for those that are new here um, and haven't actually looked at my page, my page, the description says a survivor story. Um, I am um, a survivor of childhood sexual abuse. Um, and uh, so if you just move forward, you know, uh, mindfully with that, if you want to watch this, because I do think that this channel, at least for now, is going to mostly be about that and about bringing awareness and connecting with other survivors. So, um, and just working through my journey. So I am a sexual abuse survivor, especially of, uh, a childhood abuse survivor. So <clears throat> just, you know, like I said, move forward mindfully. Um, I could potentially say trigger, triggering things. Um, if anybody has like actual suggestions on how to go about that, because, I could just be like, okay, trigger warning, and then this, but, like, what kind of trigger warning? And then even just the whole sexual assault. Like, if I were to say sexual assault trigger warning coming up, I, even that's hard to read for some people and even me. So it's, I don't know. If anybody has any thoughts, um, totally let me know on that because I want to be safe. I want to be a safe place for people, but I am also extremely open, so... um yeah we'll see how that goes um but yes i there will be many references to this and even this right now this is going to reference um my survivor story and my recovery story so again i was i brought her out 
Um, because I've just been needing to. I've just... I've been needing to sing, but I didn't want to sing to music. <clears throat> and I've just been so anxious and so... I don't even know what. <laughs> um, and I just thought, okay, I'd pick her up. And... Uh, I was like, okay, what, what do I want to play? And I was like, okay, the only song I really 100% know by heart is my song. So I'm going to play it. And, but I, I knew it was big because it's, I haven't played my song since my memories came back. Or no, I played it right after my memories came back. But I was in such a like dissociative state in such a you know, trauma response, um, just not connected, um, and so <clears throat> it was really good for me emotionally, um, but now that I'm sort of out of that dissociative state a little bit more, I picked it up and I thought I was gonna play it, and it was hard, it was really hard, I'm shaking right now even just talking about it, um, I'm probably not going to post it because I post things on other platforms and I'm super afraid to post them on YouTube. <laughs> I love singing and I've sang a little bit in my, in my videos, like just while talking to you guys. But, um, speaking of, there was supposed to be music, like, uh, like spiritual music playing. There it is. I don't know why I didn't have that playing, but so yeah, I, again, for the third time, I brought out my ukulele and I guess I'm just going to. Um, because, yeah, for all the reasons that I just said, I get distracted, if you guys know. Um, <clears throat> and I knew it was going to be hard, but I felt like I had to do it. There was, like, do you ever just feel that way? Like, you, <clears throat> you know that there's something you have to do, and you're not going to be able to do anything else until you do it. So, <coughs> excuse me, that was that, but even just putting my hands on it and resting my fingers on the neck. Like even right now I'm, I'm shaking a little bit. It's probably so minute that you can't see, but. And I'm afraid to tell you why. Because I don't really want my abusers to know this. Also though, if it ever gets to a point where my song becomes known, not that that will happen. Um, yeah, he's gonna know anyways, because I'm not, I'm a huge believer of transparency when possible. And the song's kind of about him. Unknowingly, unknowingly. I wrote it when I first started writing it. It was about someone else. Um, and so that song also fits that other person but after my memories of my sexual abuse came back, um, from that family member, I, I just felt like, okay, I need to play something. It's going to be really good. And so I started playing my song. I started singing my song and I was like, holy fucking shit, bro. It's about him. Like it's, and that's, isn't that so funny how trauma works like that? And that I think, especially for artists, like a lot of our, a lot of our trauma and our misery comes to us through our music, through our art. And I only have one song, so I don't know if I'm going to say through my music, but definitely through my art, because I am a writer in general. I, I write poetry. I love it. I love it so much. I love writing stories um I love writing Instagram posts that shit's great um um like bios I love that um and just I don't know I just love writing and so a lot of my trauma before my memories came back were writing about the abuse and I didn't even know that I didn't even know that and uh so that's so interesting I'm a huge fan of psychology and the brain. And uh, so I won't just say any more about it, but 
I just think that's so cool. Like, there is a part of me that, I'm going to call this part Bob, and <laughs> unless I start actually explaining internal family systems therapy to you, you're not going to have any idea what the fuck that means, and it's probably going to sound out there, um, but there was this part of me, I will share more about that therapy once I'm like in it more, but this part of me wants to be called Bob, it's just that, it's this one specific part of me that blocked my, that, that fully took me into dissociation during the trauma and blocked my memories away and just locked them away, just sent them all away. Um, it's Bob, I believe, that is the holder of all my memories. And he, for so long, thought that I wasn't safe to handle the trauma. And I mean, our bodies are crazy cool in terms of how we protect ourselves. And so, you know, would I have been able to handle it without my memories being repressed? I, I, I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe I couldn't, maybe I couldn't, like, and I, I don't know what that looks like, but I know that you go into survival mode, and especially because, I don't know if this happened in my case, but sometimes abusers, uh, I say sometimes, a lot of times, let me reiterate that, a lot of times, an abuser will threaten the victim, threaten the survivor, threaten their life, or they'll threaten the lives of their family or important people in their lives. Um, straight up, no joke, I will kill you if you say anything. I will kill your brother if you say anything. I will kill your best friend if you say anything. Um, <clears throat> And like I said, I don't, if, if, if that happened to me, I don't have those memories yet. Um, I expect more will come. But so that's, you go, you do, you're in survival mode. And even if they don't tell you that they're going to kill you, especially being a little kid and it, you know, and no, not even, just scratch that. Being an adult too, when you undergo such threatening drama and sexual assault is threatening. You, you may not always receive physical injuries, but you always have the potential to receive physical injuries. Um, and, well, I mean, the sexual abuse in itself is a physical injury, but I think, I want to say you guys know what I mean, but that might be the case. Um, it's hard for me even to draw the distinction between physical abuse and sexual abuse. Um, definitely they coincide for sure i think this you know like the venn diagram um but anyways more to my point um it's threatening it's it's so threat it's an invasion of someone's body and that's threatening and so yeah it's just so bob bob sent me away bob put me in a dissociative state bob sent my inner child somewhere deep inside of me so that way you know, it could survive later on, so that way they could survive later on, and I think that that's so cool, um, and Bob wanted me to, <laughs> my therapist asked me, like, what does this protector part of you, like, that specifically works with this, with this abuse, wish to be called anything, and I, out of a sea of things, Bob came through, <laughs> And, um, I just think that's so funny. <laughs> so, um, I might, I, I don't know. I don't want anybody to think that, like, I, I'm, like, schizophrenic because people are assholes. Um, but we all have different parts of ourselves, right? Um, I, unless I launch into a full-scale explanation, I'm just gonna let anybody think what they want about that. But, so, yes, this protector part saved me. And it, it holds the memories, right, from what I can gather, and uh, it wants me to feel, it, it, it wants to feel that I am safe enough to be able to take in these memories. And so while Bob's over here <laughs> protecting me, shielding me from the memories, there's also this other part that, of me that is the part that was abused that's saying, hey, like I'm gonna trickle these little things like up, you know, past that protector part so that way 
you know, we can show you, like, something's going on here. Um, and I like to think that that's kind of, like, my body was showing that to me. And also through my poetry, um, it was just, so there were parts of me that wanted me to know this, that were saying, hey, hey, something happened here. You know, this happened, you know, you were abused as a child. And so all these little things that you have been feeling your whole life actually make sense. There's a reason for that. And that didn't start happening. Like with my poetry, that didn't start happening until I was like 13, 14. Um, yeah, <laughs> so there's just, you know, there's these parts that are kind of battling each other. We all have those, you know, we all have when we feel like we're at odds with ourselves. And I was able to spend time with this protector part, you know, close your eyes, meditate, just in what is this, what is this part of you look like? You know, what do they want to be called? Spend time with it and just you know, kind of let them know, like, hey, I'm, I'm almost 28 now. I'm a lot stronger than I was back then. Um, I can handle these things. And I wanted all my memories back right away. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can handle it. It'll be fine. But I didn't get them back right away. I only got like three, four, five, maybe. Um, and, uh, even that was enough to get me like really down. Like, I, I don't really want to talk about it right now, but really, really down. And so I should maybe be grateful that that part's not letting me see everything right away. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, and, and that's the thing. That, and I think repressed memories are so cool. I just think that, that that is so cool. I'm frustrated with it. I'm so frustrated. Like, I definitely wish I could just take them all in right now. There are not good things that come from your memories being sent away. Um, and I still don't quite know how that happened for me. Like, did was I in shock and the memories just, like, got locked away after? I Or was, I, was it after a certain amount of time that I lost my memories? I don't know. I hear of, um, from survivors and also professionals that, uh, um, um, oh, I'm doing it, I'm dissociating. <sighs> Will I get back to it? <laughs> mm. Nope, I don't think, uh, I think, I think I just lost that one. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll come back to that. Um, so anyways, I guess just, <laughs> More to my point, if I, if I, if I remember what I was going to say, I'll say it, but more to my point, I played the song and afterwards I could, I could breathe for a little bit, um, because it's just a big part. And how I felt about my abuser, I guess, still feel. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's that's all shit, by the way. Um, and so to feel those words coming out of my mouth, coming out of my lips, and to feel, you know, the chords, um even simple ones, uh, it's just, there's something so precious about that, and why that is so hard for me, that doesn't even have to do with the fact that the song is about him, is because um, how do I say this? How did I say it in my last video? <sighs> because... I don't know. I think... Like I said, it's a family member. I'm not gonna say if it's a biological family member or not. Um, but... 
I guess what I will say is that, unfortunately enough, he has a big reason why I am an artist. Because he is an artist. And part of that came from wanting to please him. Wanting for him to actually see me as something worth it. Um, I don't know, maybe something that shouldn't, you know, that was so good so maybe the abuse would stop or just, I don't know, or just so good because when you're groomed, you're groomed to love the person. You're manipulated and especially if you develop Stockholm Syndrome, which happens so often. Um, so that's, that's hard and a lot of it is me. I am really clinging to is that a lot of it is me, you know, my, the, the musician in me, the vocalist in me, the, the person that loves to even just sit here and hold a ukulele, the person that paints pictures with their words when they write, that's, 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 and then the rest, the, I love drawing, I love, I don't paint really, but I, I love painting, um, I love, I love so many things about art, and that's me, it sucks that it's, that part of it's him, and that's why I don't want him to know that, um, because I don't want him to have the satisfaction, but, a be you know, the, the bigger part of it is me, and I'm really trying to accept that for what that is, because it's, you know, fuck that, fuck him, it's not, I'm not gonna allow the favorite parts about myself to have come from him, like, I'm not going to just, like, that's, I'm more than that, you know, I am, So I want to rephrase that and say that my favorite parts about myself came from myself. And that is also true. You know, maybe I was predispositioned to music and to writing. But also at the same time, maybe I like it because I chose to like it because it's mine. Actually, if anything... I chose, no, I didn't choose to, but a part of me made me like it less because of him. And I just didn't know that. I didn't know that for so long. I was like, why is the favorite, why is my favorite thing in the world making me, like, why do I feel like I hate my favorite thing in the world? Like, why do I have to stop doing my favorite thing in the world, like, 30 seconds in every time, or one song in, or, you know, two lines were in, or, uh, uh, why, you know? And so, and that, and then I was told by my end user that I just must not want it enough. <laughs> and that's a common thing in the music industry, you know, you have to, you have to want it enough. That is, a, you know, someone who experiences mental illness and executive dysfunction. Um, eh. And I mean, yes, like, you have to, let's shift that. To you have to, you have to work at it enough. You have to work at it enough. You have to. So let's not, I don't want to sit here and sit. I, I could have a whole talk about that too. Um, but for just posterity, <sighs> executive dysfunction you want to do something so badly and you can't you can't so not only do i have executive dif dysfunction but my trauma the whole i'm not worth it the whole oh well you know he he says i'm i'm bad that i'm not driven enough that blah 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 so or oh he tried to get me to sing with him before and so but then i but then i didn't want to do that when i was a kid because and at the time i was like i don't know why i just don't want to do that that's awful um and it was i was labeled as shy but really what it was is because it was him it was him so then not only was <laughs> here 
Here we are again. I think that's just for me being. It, it's just all, it's this big complex thing and I'm going to want to talk about it more. <sighs> it's scary. That's scary. I feel like nothing that I have said in this video has really like actually <laughs> made any sense or connected any dots. So I hope I watch it and feel otherwise. Um, but yeah, so I get triggered. I get triggered when I start playing, when I start singing, because all the little times that I'm not good enough, all the little time, fuck good enough, by the way, but you know, all the little times that I'm not perfect, all the little times that I, you know, think about something and get lost, that's, that's my trauma, that's not, that's first off life, but then also, you know, half of that is also because I was groomed to think that, but, um, it's also just because it's him, because it's because, you know, because he, I've always in my life connected him with music, it was music, music, him, that's what music is. That's all, that's how I see it. That's blah, blah, blah. And so obviously we know that I have mixed feelings about him because uh, of uh, the grooming and then also being part, being a family member, that makes it so... <sighs> I can't... Oh my God. I... That's, that's a whole level. Um, and by the way, I don't know if I've said this, but... Um, the majority of the time that a child is sexually abused, it's not a stranger. And I don't want to sit here and say most of the time it's a family member because I don't think that's accurate. But a lot of the time it's a family member, way more than you would think. Um, whether it's a, a family member, close friend. Um, and then there's also um, teachers, uh, uh, health professionals. Um, it's It's... It's... Yeah, it's it's often not a stranger and often a family member. Like I said, not most often. I'd have to go back and look at the statistics. So I know it's not most often, but I can't quite remember. But it's more than you would think for sure. Um, so that's just, it's... So music's been hard. And the cool thing that comes from getting my memories back, even as little at a time as they come, um... I get to pinpoint that, right? I get to pinpoint that. And the more I think about it, you know, the further I separate myself from him, you know, the, the more I can A, separate him from music, but then B, separate myself from him. And at the same time, connect myself to music like I have been all along. And that's what's so hard. It's like, <laughs> how how could I want the thing that came from him. How? How could I love that thing so much? Why would I want to put myself through that? And it's not, and that's because it wasn't a choice. It's because it's my passion. It's one of my passions. Um, and I'm hoping now I actually get to like explore them more and live through them. Obviously though, I have come to find out it is not easy. Um, like, it's not easy. Um, it's easier for me to sing, but for me to pick up that instrument, that's, that's, uh, that's, yeah. Also, he helped me restring my guitar, which I also ever, never pay, play. Um, and he, we thought about, he thought about restringing my uke. But uh, I can't remember if it didn't happen because I can't remember why it didn't happen. But I remember thinking, no, that's not going to happen. Um, like these strings are, they might not be great strings anymore. Maybe I do need great strings, but I don't want just no. And so now that's good. So at least my most played instrument, <laughs> he did not have a hand on, you know, like at least. And um he also hated this sticker. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, so there, there, you know, at least there's that. I guess I didn't think about that, but 
it's very hard to pick up the instrument and play. And it's hard to sing because he also sings, but like, or sang. But I don't know, everything is so, um, everything is so, and that's kind of what sexual abuse is. Everything is just so warped and mixed up and complicated. It's not simple. It's not, it's not simple at all. There are so many people that love to sit there and say, oh, sexual abuse, that, that did nothing to you. Like, oh, you were touched a little bit. Oh, that's fine. That's not going to mess you up uh, psychologically at all. Like, what, what harm is that even at all? Like, and then even with rape, it's like, oh, someone raped you? Like, what, you think that's a big deal? Stop acting like it's a big deal. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. I can't even fathom thinking that way because that is so far from fact and maybe it's because i'm a survivor but even before i knew i was a, a survivor i can't even the psychological <laughs> issues that come through and the survivors that are watching this you fucking know you fucking know and i still have dreams nothing crazy thank god but um that's hard i mean i stayed up i didn't go to sleep the night before last uh at all because i was afraid to have nightmares um because i was afraid to have dreams where he's in it and my family's in them a lot too fucking assholes the family that sided with him <sighs> that's hard that's hard that's to in all like in a short amount of time to just lose an, uh, an entire side of your family like <laughs> that's that still hits you know that's so i don't know i feel like i always hit this point when i'm recording where i stop really feeling like i know what i'm talking about um so, I don't know. I'll watch this and decide if I want to post it. Um, but uh, I guess the whole point, my whole point here is that, you know, I, w when you love the thing that your abuser loves, when you love the thing that reminds you of your abuser, and then in my case, when you love the thing that kind of um, came, you know, that you ha were predisposition to because you were exposed to it through your abuser, that's hard. That itself is psychologically damaging and I think that that's another reason why it's been so hard for me with music why I haven't wanted it enough um so and yeah maybe that's another reason why I want to put that out there even risking him knowing all of that is that I can't usually get past something until I voice it for one but also two I can't I gotta get vulnerable like I I gotta get vulnerable. I gotta be in the light. And I think survivors, a lot of you don't want to, but the, the survivors that do want to bring things to light, they know what that feels like because you have to live in the dark for so long. You have to keep things in the dark for so long. And to set that in, to bring that to light is so freeing. So I think that this might be a thing that I talk about a lot um especially because it's so important to me in general so um i never really hear survivors like actually reach out to me um about like sharing their story as well like in terms of like on here but like if any of you like feel that too like about you know when you love the thing that your abuser loved and wanted you to love and you know, made you not feel good enough for being able to do it, like, that's, that's hard, so if, I'm curious, like, what else, like, wh what, what do other people, what have other people experienced, like, what is that for other people, like, for me as music, what is it for you, do, do you just completely forsake the thing that you love because of your abuser, because that's totally understanding, <laughs> um, I haven't heard really too many people talk about that, and maybe that's a more specific thing that comes from, I guess I don't know. 
I guess it wouldn't have to just be a family member. It could be a teacher, you know, somebody that exposed you to this thing that they also love, that you also happen to love, that you love partly because you think that they want you to love it. Um, so I guess that doesn't only apply to like family members or close friends situations. Um, but yeah, I'm curious. Um, I'm curious. Uh, I'm really, really curious to know about that and not about how beautiful I am. And I do not say that as in, I know I'm beautiful, which fuck that though, because self-love, yes, I know I'm beautiful. Or at least I'm trying to accept that I am beautiful despite society's um, bullshit. Um, but... <laughs> I get so fired up. <laughs> um, I don't remember what I was talking about. So yes, 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 yes. Um, I'm not sitting here saying that I know I'm beautiful. So I know I don't want comments about my beauty. I'm saying that because like 95% of the comments are about how beautiful I am. And even some of the comments that are like actually in a response to like what the video is about, they'll say, oh, I'm really sorry you went through that. You're such a beautiful person. Like that's, I'm gonna delete that comment just so you know. Because sharing, sharing and talking about childhood sexual abuse, there is no room for, oh, you're such a beautiful person to have experienced that. Or there's just no room to talk about somebody's appearances in terms of sexual abuse at all. At all, at all, at all. So just, um. <coughs> Um, I would really love to have constructive conversations and maybe I don't come across that warm because I get so mad about this. So maybe that's also part of it. Um, but uh, I'm going to keep using that whole function that filters out um, comments. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I did definitely get less views since I posted that video where I was like, had the blanket over me and my hair was like completely crazy and like um, way less views on that video. So that's just as I predicted. So um, maybe that's how it should be. <laughs> um, because maybe then at this point, like the people that actually need to hear about um, this topic will hear about it. Also, though, you will not catch me, like, not dressing how I want to just because of that. Um, so if I want to, like, have this down, I will. Um, if I, like, if, like, no, no. I'm going to dress how I want. I'm going to dress how I feel comfortable in. So um, will I risk that every single time I post a video? Probably not. Um, but uh, even that makes me pissed saying that. So maybe I will. Um, and... I want to leave this and say to the person and to the people that told me, if you don't want insults or insulting comments or how, whatever they, it was the word insult, um, then why do you dress in a way that will attract abusers? Um, I got too emotional and did not respond to that comment. Um, or I might have, and I was just petty. But, um, what I want to say is that let's stop focusing on what the abuser wants and let's start punishing the abuser for wanting it let's stop silencing um people especially women uh especially female bodied individuals for wearing what they want because that is the whole fucking problem that just puts us further into it that just completely takes away from the issue so um i'm gonna wear whatever goddamn shit i want to wear and um, I'm going to keep calling out assholes that decide to make everything about that. And that's how it's just going to have to be because we're not going to get anywhere by not trying to change anything, you know? Like, we're not going to get anywhere by just hiding. Or at least I'm not going to. <laughs> um, but I think a lot of the world, we're not going to get anywhere by just hiding. And that's, that's a whole other conversation. I feel like I said that 10 times during this 39 minute video that there is just a whole other conversation. You know, I really need to start actually. Wow, it's 39, minute, 39 minutes long. Oh my God, is anybody gonna actually watch this? <laughs> um, but. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think it's time. I think I'm done. Um, I don't know if I will ever exit these videos gracefully, which is interesting because I'm not uncomfortable talking in front of a camera. 
like this, like talking to myself. So we'll see if I ever get better at that. So um, I'm really glad I recorded this. Um, I think, I really hope I'm gonna uh, go back and watch it and hope it makes sense <laughs> uh, because I definitely want to share it. So um, also, if anybody wants to, I want to hear about other ways that people are deciding not to hide from their abuser because uh, I'm hoping I get some sort of uh, uh, something out of this because, uh, yeah, if he watches this, I don't want him to know that the song was about him and that he's the reason I have such difficulty. I don't, I don't know, no, but um, I just can't hide. You know, I can't hide forever. I need to stop hiding. Um, so... I mean, fucking hope he doesn't see this, but... Ugh. Um... Yes. So... Actually, I know I said I was gonna end it five minutes ago, but... Here is where I want to end it. So that protector part I was telling you about. Who wants... It was Bob. Bob. Um... My therapist wanted me to get Bob to see that I am now the almost 28 year old and not the, you know, five, six, seven, however many year olds. Um, I can narrow down at least six, um, uh, uh, the age of six. So that I am this 28 year old and not this six year old. And she wanted me to do that by telling Bob all of the things that I feel like I've accomplished since then. And that's really triggering for me to get, that's really hard because there's this whole, I have this whole productivity complex. Um, not that I act on it a lot though, let me tell you, also because of executive dysfunction. Um, but I was always told like, oh, well, I don't do enough. I need to do things. I wasn't, I'm not driven enough. And so to be told that I need to tell Bob about all the things that I have succeeded in gave me big ick, just big ick. And so... I was actually finally able to get some things down on the list that I feel proud of, like that ca that that came from me, and not the things that maybe I would have done that he would feel proud of. And one of them is I have gained the great ability to practice being vulnerable, to to be vulnerable. Um, it's not always easy. Don't get me wrong, and it's scary, but. I have developed this great ability, uh, the great ability, and I know there's people out there that are like, why do you feel like you need to share so much? Why are you being so vulnerable? It's, you know, we're tired of hearing about vulnerability. Well, you know, whatever, um, because I think it's a beautiful thing, and so I guess I'll leave that there. Um, one thing that I am super happy that I do have that did not come from him is my great and purposeful ability to remain vulnerable even when people tell you that being soft is not good not a good thing so i actually think being soft is pretty tough so um yes i'm gonna leave that there